Hi, uh, good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining in uh, on a Saturday evening. Um, I think most of the people have joined in, and uh, we are at four or five, so I think we will get started, and maybe some people will join in the next couple of minutes. But you know, just to uh, you know, start and why why we are having this webinar. The the simple thought which we were having is, you know, CSK is one of the most interesting investment opportunities which we have come across in the recent history. Uh, it is certainly one of the most exciting investments, both from a business perspective, because it's you know actually investing into a IPL cricket team, which possibly for a retail investor was absolutely impossible unless uh, up until it was for CSK. But uh, also from a point of view of value creation, so I think CSK has been one of the most rewarding investments which uh, we've had in our portfolio, and uh, you know therefore I was very excited to present this topic and to you know walk us walk everyone through where did we get started how did we first identify csk so before we get started i think a couple of ground rules uh, uh, to give you a basic timeline i think we will be covering around 25 minutes of presentation time and along with that we'll open up the floor post that for about 10 minutes of q a but what i would still urge is you know whenever you get a question or whenever there's something you want to ask or you know what want to run by us I think you should uh, type it up in the question box and uh, if it's a issue which can be sorted out, our team will handle it and uh, any relevant questions I will take up at the end of the session. But, you know, please keep the questions coming so that, you know, we don't lose flow. Yeah, so let's get started. Uh, I think firstly, again, thank you all for joining in. Uh, Nikunj, thank you for organizing the entire show. Uh, so I think I would start with, you know, how did CSK came into being and how did CSK really uh, end up in the kitty of investors? So India Simmons actually happens to be a listed company, which a lot of investors have put money into. And uh, India Simmons had CSK, had bid for the CSK franchisee as part of the original set of teams, which had applied to BCCI for taking a cricketing, uh, for an IPL team franchisee. And uh, somewhere around 2015 September, is when India Simmons decided to actually demerge, right? And all shareholders of India Simmons got one is to one shares in CSK also. So say if you were holding 4,000 shares of India Simmons on, uh, I think 9th October was the record date. And if on 9th October, 2015, you were holding shares of India Simmons, you would have gotten shares of CSK as a part of the demerger program. And this split had happened in a ratio of one is to one. So say if you're holding say 10,000 shares, you would have gotten 10,000 shares of CSK as well. I think when the uh, demerger had happened, the shares of CSK were valued at 11 rupees per share. And the idea was they had valued it on the basis of book value. And uh, uh, to an investor, it had been given free of cost. So it was valued at 11, but in your demand, it would have shown up at, at face value. Uh, now coming to the current situation, you know, uh, how does, uh, firstly, just taking you through what, what we plan to cover. So the coverage would be a bit on CSK, some on understanding why an IPL team is such a great investment or why are there so many takers of an IPL team and why uh, there is a brand value attached with that and why people are actually wanting to pay top dollar to be able to, asso to, be able to associate themselves and being called as the owner of a cricket team. So before getting started, you know, I would actually want to understand or maybe I would want to take you through guys that how does the IPL cricket team actually make money, right? Because these guys are not selling anything, right? So you're not buying anything from an IPL cricket team per se, which allows them to make revenue. You're simply watching the screen and, you know, people, and the, the, there are teams playing each other who are, you know, competing against each other and winning matches and getting reward points. So how, how does your IPL franchisee actually make money? So I think first and foremost, the largest contributor to an IPL cricket team's uh, revenue is sale of media rights. So just to give you a perspective, for the last five years, which started in 2016 and ended in 2022, the total media rights was bid at 16,000 crores by Star India. And this roughly turns out to be around 3,500 crores per annum, which a broadcaster is willing to pay BCCI to be able to have an exclusive right to uh, stream IPL both on digital platforms like uh, Hotstar 
as well as on the star sports channels and why this why why are people paying through the nose is because ipl actually is a media property which is absolutely unrivaled so there are absolutely no other media properties which can give a kind of exposure which an ipl uh, uh, you know an ipl season can give a brand and therefore both advertisers and broadcasters are willing to pay through their nose to be able to you know associate their brand or associate their tv channel or their broadcasting service with uh, ipl cricket season so roughly say out of uh, just to give you an example say 60 16000 crores being the overall five year five year money which which pool which bcci is earning out of that almost 60% is pro rata and it is distributed between the cricket team so out of 3500 crores which is collected on an annual basis from the broadcaster a certain portion is kept by bcci for managing the entire show but the majority portion of it is actually split between the franchises and that is what form, form forms the greatest or the largest part of an ipl cricket team's earnings next is a pretty obvious so i think ticket sales so you know if you are going to a, a, a cricket stadium and you are attending a cricket match you are obviously incurring an expense to buy a ticket and around uh, a portion of that is shared between both the teams which are playing and a portion goes to bcci for organizing the show again thirdly comes again an obvious contender so prize money so both the winning teams get a uh, check of between the winner and the runners up so this for just for an example in 2021 csk won a prize money of around 20 crores and kkr had won 12 and a half crores so this is the third source of revenue for a cricketing team next coming to franchise sponsors i'm i'm sure for each of the teams you would have associated their jerseys with a specific company so you know uh, as as you can see the screen you know with the with the chennai super kings you can see gulf and mitra uh, in the mumbai indians we can see samsung uh, then we have muthoot jsw byju who's npl who are sponsoring different teams but the idea is these are specifically these are sponsorships which are given by a brand directly to a team and this entire money is paid to the specific team and the amount of money a team is able to raise through a franchise sponsorship actually depends upon the kind of control or the kind of uh, reach it has over its audience next is the title sponsorship now title sponsorship is basically the name of the brand which goes before the ipl so last season was vivo ipl and this current season is tata ipl so these are the this is the title sponsorship which again goes to bcci a portion of it is retained by bcci and the remainder is actually passed on to the uh, franchise teams to give you a rough, rough estimate of how much money is generally made through title sponsorship so tata did a deal for 2 years with bcci and they are paying around 3355 crores per annum so it's it's a 2 year deal totally valuing it at 680 crores for the entire 2 year period and uh, 40% is retained by bcci out of the 350 crores and the rest is div divided equally between the 10 franchises and lastly currently this is probably a very small part but going forward we actually foresee this to be one of the larger portions and this to be you know doubling by you know a, a 60 70% growth for the next 5 years so merchandise sales is one aspect which is still very niche very small in the indian ecosystem but if you benchmark this with global counterparts you know sales merchandise sales of manchester united or chelsea or liverpool or for that matter uh, npl leagues and nfl leagues they make huge money by selling merchandise uh, uh, you know scarves jerseys caps uh, uh, mobile covers deodorants so even even uh, chennai super kings also happens to have launched their own deodorant under their own brand name and as the brand recall and the fan base of these teams keep going up this entire portion of merchandise sales will really boost up their balance sheets so i think this this was a small summary of uh, where ipl teams make their money so just to summarize i think one largest source is obviously broadcast share of broadcasting rights share of title sponsorship franchise revenue which they directly get merchandising sales and ticketing revenue so these happen to be the five headers where teams are actually able to make money now coming down to a little specific uh, scenario and just to understand how does this reflect in the pnl and the balance sheet of cscsk specifically So this is CSK's revenue split, 
costs. And roughly, if you see the first line item, so it's it's share of rev from BCCI. This would include the split of broadcasting rights, which they are getting from BCCI, and the title sponsorship, which is again shared between BCCI and the franchisee teams. So this actually forms the largest part of their top line. So say roughly, if I take for 1920, uh, CSK generated total revenue of 356 crores, out of which 239 was generated through share of revenue from BCCI. 67 crores becomes the sponsorship revenue which CSK made in 1920. And this was from the sponsorship which was given directly to CSK by the people who had, you know, put in franchisee logos over their t-shirts, who had sponsored their buses, who had sponsored different wings of the team and, you know, had made advertising uh, platforms available to them. The next comes tournament related revenues. This includes both gate, gate revenues and merchandise sales. And other income generally forms small parts of miscellaneous, miscellaneous revenues. Coming next to where do actually teams spend money? And I think no points for guessing, but I think the largest portion for a team to spend money is definitely on the team players. So, you, you know, uh, IPLs, uh, bidding for players is a very uh, fa fabulous event, you know, accompanied with the most prestigious auction ever possibly. And 50% uh, uh, of the total spl uh, total cost incurred by a company uh, or incurred by a team is actually uh, incurred to buy the players and to uh, remunerate their staff. The next header is franchise fees. Now, franchise fees is a very important and crucial aspect, and it actually forms a very important part of why CSK is uh, or why the original ten teams are very are in a very advantageous position in compared to you know teams which are getting sold right now, which would be Lucknow and uh, Ahmedabad. So, franchise revenue is what the what the teams had decided to pay BCCI when they had acquired the franchisee. And this was then, uh, I think, spread over 10 years. So for 10 years, the teams had to pay a certain portion of the money which had been committed at the start of IPL. And this uh, goes to BCCI for them being able to buy a, buy a particular franchisee from BCCI. The rest are fairly simple. So I think it's administration, tournament, sponsorship, and miscellaneous. So roughly giving you a total estimate uh, of say a team spending 250 crores in a year, 130 crores would go to remunerate the staff and to buy the buy the players. Along with that, 75 crores goes to actually uh, processing the franchisee fees, which is basically the amount of share which is given to BCCI for the team to be able to operate their uh, expenses. And the rest is whatever is administration, you know, uh, coaches, buses, hotels, uh, IPL after parties tournament expenditures, sponsorships, and the likes. Right. Giving you a brief snapshot of how the financials looks like. So we had we had gone through the splits. So uh, in a sense, the split was roughly around 356 crores of revenue for 2020 and around 256 crores of costs. Along with this, there are certain uh, other costs which uh, you know fall under the miscellaneous header. But roughly, Post cutting all costs, the, the teams are making close to a 74 crore kind of profit bottom line. And post taxes, they have made close to a 50 crore profit for the year 2020 and close to a 40 crore profit for the year 2021. Now, roughly what this signifies is uh, off the top line, they are actually able to generate a close to 15% PAT, which by any standards is, is, a, is a fair uh, net margin to have. But we'll come back to this slide in a very interesting aspect. And I will come back to it after, you know, maybe uh, the next four slides. And I'll, I'll tell you why I'll, I'll be coming to that at a later point of time. Now coming to why did we recommend CSK? When did we recommend CSK? And what do we still think about it? So like I had uh, introduced, CSK came into the markets in the pre-IPO space somewhere around 2015 at 11 rupees per share when it was demerged from India Cements. CSK's capital is 3 crores and its face value is 10 paisa, which makes the total number of shares outstanding 33 crores. So 33 crores times 11 would roughly give you a team valuation of 330 crores in the year 2015-2016, roughly. And 2016 is when you know the shares actually started changing hands in the pre-IPO space and people actually got to know that they are holding and then they can liquidate and new investors also started coming in. But roughly at that point of time, uh, the entire valuation of the company was around 330 crores. 
I think a couple of years later, a couple of years before, Pune Warriors had actually been sold. And this is when we were actually, uh, you know, doing our own research and trying to understand whether CSK as an investment actually makes sense. Because at that point, cricket teams were something, you know, which was completely unheard of from an investing perspective. They were always meant to be, you know, enjoyed with friends and, you know, uh, or or spending an evening shouting at the TV. Uh, But no one had really evaluated, especially in the retail investing community from an investor's point of view. But what we saw that in 2011, Pune Warriors was sold as a franchisee from BCCI at 1900 crores. And CSK, which was already a pretty successful franchisee, was available at a total valuation of 330 crores. And in 2015, also, we had uh, done some research and we found that there were a couple of companies who had done brand valuations for CSK teams. And just the brand value for CSK was coming close to around 250, 300 crores at that point of time. So if a company, if a team which was one of the original set of teams with from BCCI with, uh, you know, having MS Dhoni uh, playing at its forefront, having great brand value was available at 300 crores, while a team which was a fresh being sold in 2011 was at 1900 crores. And that is where we realized that, there, you know, there is a significant mispricing. And this is something which needs to, uh, you know, be taken very seriously. And it is not just fun and games. And, you know, real money can be made out of this particular uh, investment opportunity and that's that's when we actually started accumulating and we started getting our investors to also invest in money and we also invested our own funds and we started building a portfolio in this so i think roughly we started uh recommending csk actively close to when it was actually around a 30 rupees per share kind of scenario what i'll do is i'll probably take you out of uh, this and we will actually see the graph price graph and I think that will be really interesting. So let me just see if you can actually, I am actually able to present my screen as well. Yeah, I am. Yeah, so uh, just coming to this price graph and just to understand how Chennai Super Kings has actually moved in terms of pricing in the unlisted market. We'll just have a look at uh, you know the price graph which is there on the website. It's taking a minute to load. Let's shift this to maximum. Right. So you know, if you roughly see close to 2019, just two years back, it was available at a price of 29 rupees per share. And to be honest, this is when we were actually very serious about an investment in CSK. And this is the point wherein we started getting a lot of supply also. And therefore, this is the point we actually started accumulating CSK in a big way. And even at 29, the team was worth maybe, you know, 900 crores. So at 11 rupees, it was say close to 300. At 30, it was close to uh, 900 crores. But even then, because uh, we were able to compare it with the kind of investments it was... uh, kind of money new teams were trying to pay for a new franchisee and at right this point i think we realized that in 2018 the delhi team had been bought had been sold had sold a 50 percent stake to jsw for close to our 550 600 crore levels so that again supplemented our understanding and we realized that you know an ipl team which is doing fairly well should at least be worth 1500 crores and a good team with a good brand value should at least be worth worth upwards of 1800 and 2000 crores and that's when we actually started buying uh, into IPL. And as you can see, the price actually kept going up. So I think uh, one year later, close to 2021, it was around a 66 rupees price level. Then it started, you know, closely inching forward and forward. And this and these were there were always small, small triggers. You know, the title rights for BCCI getting higher, the kind of broadcasting revenue it was expecting getting higher. I think last year when Star actually was able to t- pick up the broadcasting rights. Amazon and uh, Reliance were also actually fairly close in the bids, which and even Facebook were fairly close in the bids which they had placed for you know acquiring these broadcasting rights, and that is where we actually felt that going forward there will be a huge demand for it. Now, 
uh, here you would see a you know massive jump right i think from a level of 120 it went up to 200 in one go so this was the time when you know uh, the two new teams were auctioned by bcci which was the uh, lucknow and the andabad and you know as uh, you might know lucknow i think was bid by mr goenka from uh, rpsg group and uh, lucknow went for close to 7770 crores and uh, the other team i think that went for close to 5500 crores to the cbc capital private equity group so this really again gave us a boost and this told us that you know boss uh, 2000 crores for an ipl team right now it's, it's nothing 2000 3000 it's, it's it's a material these teams will be worth much more money for a new team which has to pay franchisee fees going forward which has zero brand value which has zero players which has zero track record if a team can be sold for 7000 crores then IPL, which is actually the second most successful cricket team, can in no way be lower than that. And this, this is what, what you know we really appreciate about the stock markets is at any point of time, if you actually give attention to it, it will give you an option to make significant amount of wealth, which you know no other instrument possibly in, uh, can can allow you to make. And since then, you know, uh, it has it has been hovering around. Obviously, it gets affected by a market. Uh, uh, you know, broader market sentiment sentiments. The Russia war happens, so it maybe it rationalizes a little. But this is roughly how it goes. And to understand the price graph, it started from say close to twenty five rupees in two thousand nineteen, and right now, say uh, the current price is close to two hundred and eleven rupees. So if I average it out a little, I think that is close to a eight x nine x return in a span of I think maybe barely two years. Which, which you know is a, a phenomenal return to have on your wealth. So if you're really actually even invested one lakh rupees in 2019 in CSK and you did not get uh, divested in that period, you would now be sitting on eight lakhs worth of CSK in a conservative scenario. So I think coming back to our slide, uh, <clears throat> the, the the idea was very clear. We found a significant mispricing, and that's when you know, we started uh, investing in CSK, getting people invested. And uh, you know, since that, then it has paid off really well. Coming to how the CSK partnerships looks looks like going forward, CSK is what, the one of the two teams which has actually made hundred crores in direct sponsorship. So the only team to be able to score a sponsorship revenue more than hundred crores is Mumbai Indians, and that again speaks of the phenomenal brand value and the phenomenal fan following which CSK has. And mind you, this was, I think, close to a 55, 60 crore figure up until last year. So this gives you almost a 80, 85% increase from the last financial set. So last year it was 60 crores. This year it's, it's 100 crores for CSK in terms of direct sponsorships. The next biggest item, and I think this, this will be the, the absolute game changer for the entire IPL ecosystem. The IPL media rights is planned to be sold at 50,000 crores for the next five year period which was for the last five year period pegged at 16000 crores which is more than a 300 percent increase in the kind of money these teams will raise and just to make make things interesting uh, i i had actually told you that i'll stop by the last financials one more time and why i wanted to do that was say yeah let's let's go here so say if this 230 crores or 240 crores if this gets multiplied by 3x for the next year and we actually are able to generate 750 crores from bcci because you know equal proportionately the teams also might start getting an additional remuneration and if you know this team is actually able to generate 750 crores in top line and adding the rest maybe you know uh, close to 900 1000 crores in terms of top line even if i add more expenses because the expenses will not rise in a linear portion right because with the broadcasting rights, there is a five year period after which you know you get an increase. But all the other expense items are getting added on a linear basis. Therefore, the rise in costs will be lower than the rise in revenue. So maybe this 250 can go to 350, it can go to 400. But this 350 will expectedly go up till 900, 1000 within the next one to two years. And once that happens, possibly this bottom line, which we are seeing at close to, you know, a 67, 50 crore level, this might simply go up, you know, 5x, 6x from here, who knows? Because whatever is the additional revenue from broadcasting rights, that will directly come to the bottom line. Because the money you are pay, paying to Dhoni or money you are paying to 
uh, you know, Gautam Gambhir to acquire him will not change 300% from last year to current year. But the revenue share which you're getting from BCCI may actually go 3x. But stepping back again, you know, how does BCCI also justify such an increase? So let's let's uh, uh, see how the broadcasting rights actually un uh, splits up. So there's a, there's a major change in the way broadcasting rights have been treated, right? So earlier it was one single bid for both digital and TV rights and Star took, uh, was able to bid for the largest and they got the entire gamut. They were able to uh, display on the streaming service Hotstar and they were able to display it on the uh, television channels, uh, you know, Star Sports and all. But this year, BC has actually split the entire broadcasting rights into four buckets. The first being television rights, which is pegged at 74 matches, 90 crores, roughly giving you a base price of 18,000 crores just for the TV rights. The digital rights are separately pegged at 74 matches, again, 90 crores each, giving you a roughly 12,200 crores of a base price. Opener and playoffs are priced separately at 1,440 crores. And overseas digital rights for streaming outside India are pegged for another 1,100 crores. So a rough calculation with 18, 12, 30,000, 32,000 crores as the base price, this in itself is a 100% increase over its previous estimates. The industry estimates that on the base price, the uh, BCCI should actually be able to generate a multiple of 1.4 to 1.5, which would actually make this figure close to 48, 48 49,000 crores. So if for simplification, if I consider it 45 or 50,000 crores, that is a jump of 3x from 16,000 crores, which they had gotten for the last five years. And this is where, you know, a real game changing is happening as far as, you know, the balance sheets and the profit and loss statements of, uh, you know, IPL teams goes. If they are really able to pull this off, this will really change the way, uh, you know, IPL teams have been functioning and they will reach a whole different league, at least, uh, you know, when it comes to financials. Uh, we also compared, you know, IPL to certain other teams like NFL and NBA, and we saw that the cost per viewership is fairly high uh, when you compare it with what what is there for IF, uh, for IPL. So, just for example, for NFL, this was 80x of what we were incurring uh, for the last five years, and for NBA, it was 53x of what we had incurred in the IPL per viewership cost per, for the last year. Right, so I think this this was a uh, this was a summary which we wanted to arrive at. You know, the point being that uh, whenever you're investing into uh, specifically the pre-IPO markets, you have to understand what is going on, where is the mispricing. So even right now, if we look at how does the current valuation is playing out uh, at a market cap of uh, 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 at a 211 rupees per share, uh, the current market cap of CSK is close to 7,000 crores. Whereas RPSG has had won the rights to operate at close to 7,090 crores. Now for a team which is the most successful cricketing team ever, uh, Lucknow uh, was being a fresh team. I think uh, CSK should be worth much more than 7,000 crores, which maybe Mr. Goenka has paid for uh, Lucknow Super Giants. And that, that again gives a very good push to our thesis on why CSK is an excellent, excellent investment. Thank you for taking out the time and listening to me. Um, at this point, maybe we'll just open the floor up for a couple of questions. And yeah, Nikunj. Yes, we have uh, quite a lot of questions that I tried to address earlier. And we have a question from Mr. Vijay Gupta. Uh, yeah. What if Moni goes and maybe CSK loses match? How will the brand value affect? So the sure. entire thing, yeah. Please take it away. Yeah. So I think uh, definitely Dhoni is the face of the brand. That's for sure. Uh, but what we expect is that once the brand, once Dhoni goes away, he will not go away entirely. Yeah. He will stay on as you know a mentor, an advisor, a coach. In some capacity, he will still be associated with CSK. But even if that happens, you know what I what the point which I was trying to drive home is that. Win or lose is very little to contribute to how the balance sheet and the profit and losses will turn up because it's not revenue from winning the matches, which is, you know, uh, supplementing the PNL. It is absolutely the share in broadcasting rights, which actually makes a difference. So even if, you know, Dhoni is not there 
going forward i don't think it will make too much of a difference because he will be there in some capacity he might not be as the captain he might not be on the field but he will definitely be, be there in the stands of the team uh aniket saprej ji said how does the selection impact winning and hence the revenue team stays on for a few years hence that also has a bearing will msb continue with so we have answered this question more or less i think i think it's pretty similar i think the question again boils down to you know what happens when dhoni is not there with csk but uh, you know like like i said dhoni will be there in some capacity uh, be it a coach or a mentor and uh, even if he's not there i i really don't think it makes that much of a difference because a, a team is actually more than the face it it has a lot of other factors which also come into play yeah. yeah so we have a couple of questions that uh, are related to valuations and forward looking projections so if you can just uh, uh, give us an insight on how the valuation looks for the coming two years and uh, the price trajectory makes sense so uh, see in terms of valuation like we already covered in the last slide roughly at say a 211 rupee per share valuation at a 33 crore share outstanding figure we are roughly looking at a 7000 crore valuation right and uh, again if you compare this with lucknow which was again at a 7000 crore rupee valuation there are a lot of things which are in favor of csk you know csk has already paid its share of uh, franchise fees for the last 10 years which lucknow will be paying for the next 10 years and therefore its pnl will be nothing like what csk will have secondly csk is the highest second highest brand value team after mumbai indians so the brand value associated to the team itself i think it's close to 2500 crores thirdly csk is the second most successful teams in in terms of wins so again that plays a big role uh, you know uh, in terms of the success of the team so if uh, even conservatively lucknow is worth 7000 crores today even by you know a back of the envelope calculations i don't think csk can be anything lower than at least a 30 40% uh, you know premium for, for from lucknow right so uh, i think i can also see a couple of questions which are also interesting isn't it fully priced at so i i'll just read out a question possibly Is, isn't it fully priced at 7000 crores with 800 crores expected top line in the next two years yeah so i think uh, in my in my experience i think csk's valuation i see it in two methods one is once one is on a fundamental level and one is on a relative level on a fundamental level purely from a financial financial standpoint if a team is roughly able to generate 500 crores of pat or 400 crores of pat which might happen if the broadcasting rights play out the way we had discussed and at a 20x multiple to uh, net pat and 20x is fairly conservative for a cricket team i think it will never be less than 30 35 but even taking a 25 multiple it should easily be worth 10000 crores right now at least when the bcci auctions end at that point we'll have more clarity but 10000 crores looks like a fairly doable figure so at 7000 crores i do not think it is fully priced in. and second on a relative note like i said lucknow a fresh team at 7000 crores csk the most successful or the second most successful team after mumbai indians at 7000 crores i i would definitely place my bets with csk uh because they want to pick up a couple of more and uh, you know just maybe highlight Uh, mostly the questions are uh, on the price trajectory and the if you can uh, give some insights on the listing I targets I, i think a common theme uh, you know if if csk does not get listed then how to sell shares so i think see uh, one factor which we missed out is you know one of the great stock market veterans is actually increasing his stake in csk on a regular basis so if you're following the balance sheet radha kishan damani has been upping his stake and uh, while while they, that that is no certainty to an ipo but definitely once someone who has his all his experience and timeline uh, you know being in the markets uh, on the board or as as a ma- major shareholder i think he will be able to figure out an exit route in which you know he'll be able to either find a secondary buyer to for the entire company or if not a buyer then possibly an ipo might be on the books and see uh, CSK actually might be the first sports team to go for an IPO in India, right? 
So if you compare it to US, I think Manchester United is already listed. There are a couple of teams in the EPL which are already listed. But for India, there is actually no sports team which is available for an investment. That is where I think CSK will, uh, you know, really have an upper hand. So even I, I can't really comment on the listing timeline, but I think it should come in because of a strong hand coming uh, up in a big way. And also because, you know, now the markets are also mature enough that, you know, uh, even startups and cricket teams will be perceived well. Uh, just to take a couple of more questions quickly, apart from CSK and the other. So what we'll do is uh, we, are, we are targeted to 445 to complete the webinar. And I think we have another five minutes. So we'll just take the next three minutes to maybe take a couple of more questions. So apart from CSK, is any other IPL team share available right now? No, not, not in the retail space. Uh, value of RCB and Punjab vis-a-vis -vis CSK. So we can get the brand valuations for these companies, but because there is no availability of shares, therefore giving a exact pricing for RCB and Punjab would be difficult. Uh, CSK at 0.1 rupees, the price to book value being 2000 times looks little, little tricky. Yeah, so uh, what I would possibly understand from this question is CSK is not something which you would uh, ever be able to buy by comparing book values, right? This is so there are so if I could tell you that there are 10 teams which you can own and for the most loved sport in the most loved league in the most populous country in India. And therefore, brand value will always form a very large part of the entire valuation for the team. And therefore, brand, therefore, a value per share will never be a right metric to evaluate a team. And this is this is fairly standard if you compare, you know, international cricketing teams as well. Um, taking the next question: Is Dream Sports available? They might get broadcasting rights. Uh, no, Dream Sports is not available at the moment, and I don't think they are bidding for broadcasting rights because they do not have a streaming service. They are into fantasy sports and they are anyways using IPL uh, and they, I think, sponsor some teams and they might come up in a sponsorship angle, but I don't think they will be, they will ever be looking to acquire uh, broadcasting rights. Books. Uh, next question. Do you think if Punjab or RCB would be valued on par with CSK? Um, RCB does have a very good following specifically, maybe because it's from Bangalore and therefore they are able to garner a lot of sponsorship. And it also has a quotient because of uh, Virat Kohli. But uh, Punjab might be a little behind in my opinion. But again, uh, until there is availability and until there is a fair way to relatively value this, uh, these companies, it's, it's very difficult to answer that. Uh, Ankit Sapre is writing fan code broadcasts. I am not sure how to answer that. If you could possibly elaborate a little more on that. Uh, I see a couple of more questions, but it is majorly on the lines of listing, valuation, uh, and on Dhoni, of course. So I think all these three we have covered fairly well. Pankaj is asking, how is the current shareholding, current holding pattern? I think uh, in terms of holding, uh, we have the larger shareholders being LIC, RKD, uh, India Cements, of course. And then there are a large number of retail investors. And I think there are there are a couple of private equity guys on board as well. But in, in the top five, definitely these would be the ones. Uh, yeah, webinar link, uh, Atul, I think that will come to your mail ID directly if you've registered uh, because it, it, it'll be auto sent. Uh, what is your target? While I don't give a target specifically, uh, the, the, the understanding is very simple. 7,000 crores looks a little cheap for the company. 30-40% upside from here is what we can clearly see. But uh, what will possibly give a target is once the broadcasting rights sales actually materialize. Because at that point, we'll actually be able to really comment on how the balance sheet would actually turn up. Great. I will just browse through the questions. I think we have the last 30 seconds of the webinar open to us. Uh, but I think we have majorly covered all. All right. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for joining in. Uh, if you have any further questions which you would like uh, for me or my team to answer, you know, you can reach out to Nikunj. Uh, his mail, mail ID is nikunj.altisinvestec.com. Uh, his credentials would have been mailed along with the invite to the webinar. Uh, really love presenting here on this Saturday evening. Thank you for joining in. Looking to you know do this uh, more often in the next couple of months. We'll be uh, discussing internally on various interesting topics. And, you know, uh, as for the people who are registered on our platform, you will get an automatic update on whatever interesting is happening on the pre-IP side of things. 
looking forward to getting in touch with you guys again thank you have a great evening and a great weekend take care anikunj i think we can uh, you know end the webinar now